Hallo zusammen! This video is meant to be a tribute to Till Lindemann and what he does in Rammstein and in Lindemann and in general. And it's also gonna be a German lesson of sorts because I'm gonna analyze Till Lindemann speaking German. Colloquialisms like colloquial terms and words that get mainly used in spoken daily German. So let's combine those two things, music and my admiration for it and the German language. In other words, let's take a linguistic look at Till Lindemann speaking German. A first very obvious thing, even if you don't know too much about the German language yet, he doesn't roll the R when he speaks daily German. Why is that? That's nothing unusual though, quite the opposite. Don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean he is fake whatsoever, it just shows that him rolling the R so prominently has nothing to do with his own dialect or way of speaking German. It's rather a stylistic choice, based on theatrical expressive German, a natural fit regarding his low singing voice and the content he's singing about. If you want to find out more about this whole topic, feel free to check out my video about that in the end card. And by the way, please keep in mind that whenever I'm gonna say something like, okay, that's not grammatically correct and, you know, that sort of deviates from the ordinary norm, for instance in written German, that doesn't mean that Till doesn't know how to use his own language, of course. It just means that colloquial, daily, spoken German can really, really differ from, well, the standard written or high German that you might learn in school. All right, all right. So let's continue. Diese, uh, war Something you might also get right away is him using the interjection or particle a. Eh. It's very similar to the English, uh, but it usually gets verbalized more like the German umlaut a. Eh. Das war eine Stierkampfarena oder eine Gladiatorenarena oder so. Eine Stierkampfarena. Short forms are very common in colloquial informal German. Something that's very typical is saying ne, when you actually mean the longer form of it, the feminine, indefinite, singular, nominative and accusative article eine. Eine Stierkampfarena, for die Stierkampfarena being a feminine noun. However, this ne is not to be confused with the equally common conversational particle ne at the end of sentences, which gets verbalized slightly more stressed and, you know, upwards, it's rather ne. It's quite similar to saying right at the end of sentences in English. So Amphitheater. So Amphitheater. We've just talked about a short form of the eine. And this one is quite similar, except this right here is a contraction, a merging of two words to a shorter one. In this case, it's so, such, and the colloquial short form of the neuter, indefinite, singular, nominative and accusative article ein. Hm, so ein, so ein Amphitheater, for das Amphitheater being a neuter noun. Sieht steinalt aus. Steinalt. I've made a video about the interesting German adjective steinreich, literally stone rich, before, and this is another good example of a few German adjectives that feature the prefix stone. It's pretty much an increasing prefix. For instance, in this case, it's combined with the adjective alt, old. And when something is steinalt, stone old, it's really, really freaking old, pretty much ancient. In addition, leaving out the subject or other parts of speech is quite common in colloquial German too. Denkste, das ist so dieses Kolosseum in Rom. Denkste, das ist so dieses Kolosseum in Rom. Denkste is a contraction, a combination of the conjugated verb denkst for the second person singular, Präsens, the German simple present, indicative mode, active of denken, to think or reflect, and the just mentioned du, which is the common informal singular form of address, for instance when you're talking to a family member, a friend or someone else close to you. Usually it would be du denkst, or lining up with the syntactical order of the sentence denkst du, but this would merge to denkste. The du turns to the suffix a, uh, which gets verbalized in a highly typical German way, the schwa sound, which basically is a weak, unstressed, bored German e. Uh, denkste. This way of merging a verb and a personal pronoun is very typical and not limited to this specific case at all. However, don't confuse it with the normal way of expressing a verb in the Präteritum, the German simple past, which would be ich dachte, I thought. 
It also makes use of the schwa, but this is a completely different context. Because in this case, the e or e uh, belongs to this conjugated form of the verb. It's not a contraction. Man kriegt gute Laune irgendwie. Man kriegt gute Laune irgendwie. This is a great German example for a highly typical phenomenon and one of the most common differences between spoken and written German, both formal and informal, by the way. The verb kriegt is spelled with a g, but when most Germans verbalize it, the g is verbalized like a ch, ch, ch. This happens mostly regardless of specific dialects or regiolects, but some Germans might also verbalize it like a g because of their specific dialect. That is also possible. This applies to many g's inside of words or at the end, for instance in König, der König, or der König, the king. Both verbalizations are correct. The spelling stays the same anyway. Pretty much every person in every language has so-called trademark terms, meaning words that they use more often than others, and that are pretty much unique to them and their way of speaking, their idiolect, which is their own choice of words, basically their own word order here and there in spoken colloquial German, which might deviate from, well, the norm in a way, and grammatical rules. And for till, well, there's also one of those words that I could figure out, at least in this interview, and that is irgendwie, somehow. He likes to say that quite a lot. Then is the acoustic ziemlich extrem, weil sie bleibt halt in diesem Kessel. Weil sie bleibt halt in diesem Kessel. What's typically German here is the word order, which is wrong grammatically, but highly common like this in colloquial German. The introducing term of this Nebensatz, the subordinate clause, is the subjunction weil, because. However, syntactically, Germans usually continue this type of Nebensatz as if it was a main clause, der Hauptsatz. Till says, weil sie bleibt halt in diesem Kessel. That is really typical German, but grammatically speaking, it's wrong. It's rather needed to be, weil sie halt in diesem Kessel bleibt. Like a subordinate clause, the verb is at the end. Also, this sentence features one of the most common German filler words, which also gets used subconsciously most of the time. Halt, which could get translated to, well, basically, or just, or simply. Das ist halt so. That simply is like that. Ich mag das nicht, wenn, wenn ich angeguckt werde. In spoken German, the negating particle nicht, not, often gets verbalized without the last T. This is not a general unspoken rule, but it's a very common phenomenon. So very often in spoken German, it's nicht instead of nicht. What's more normal in spoken German in general is the verbalization of the G like a K in gucken, to look or to watch, or here, angucken to look at something or someone. It's spelled with a G, but it's verbalized gucken with a K. Das ist ein, ist ein genialer Effekt mit, dem, mit, mit diesem Boot. Ich finde, das ist ein genialer Effekt mit diesem Boot. Here we're faced with the short form n for the masculine indefinite singular nominative article ein for der Effekt being a masculine noun. Again, it's also part of the contraction isn, meaning ist ein, is a. In this case, Till has left out the T at the end of ist, but it could also exist with that T, isten, instead of isn. Uh, also, wenn der nicht kommt, dann kriege ich mal schlechte Laune irgendwie. Also, Olli ist das Zentrum und bewegt sich da wirklich wie auf so einem Händemeer. Also, Olli ist das Zentrum und bewegt sich da wirklich wie auf so einem Händemeer. I chose this phrase to show you that using a language might be based on tendencies and common structures, but there can also be some, well, sort of irregularities, or inconsistencies, if you will. In this case, for instance, Till verbalized the G in bewegt like the actual G and not like a CH. Bewegt. A small but interesting detail when you consider that often, or like most of the time, he actually says ch instead of g. Also, for instance, in parts of northern Germany, there is a sort of tendency to blur or to slur the vowel e in words to the extent that it rather reminds of a weak ö or ü. In this case, Till has a slight tendency to say wirklich instead of wirklich. Really. That is uh, the best effect, so den ich kenne eigentlich. Das ist äh, der beste Effekt, so den ich kenne eigentlich. 
since he says that quite quickly, I can't really hear properly whether he says did or dat, but either way, both are colloquial, sort of dialect-based forms of the neuter, definite, singular, nominative and accusative article das. Did with a short unstressed e would be highly typical for the Berlin dialect, for instance. In the Ruhr area, in North Rhine-Westphalia, in the Ruhrgebiet, so to speak, many people also say dat instead of das. I actually do that as well, and people living in my region, which is the Sauerland, which is pretty close to the Ruhrgebiet. Den haben sie schon mal in den letzten Reihen hinten, wo keiner mehr war, und dann ist er auf die Erde gefahren. Und und kam zurück und hat ein paar blaue Flecken. Den haben sie schon mal in die letzten Reihen hinten, wo keiner mehr war und dann ist er auf die Erde gefallen und kam zurück und hatte ein paar blaue Flecken. A long phrase, but pretty interesting again. Hamse is another contraction, a colloquial combination of haben and sie, they have, for the third person plural, presence, indicative mode, active, sie haben. The ending the is Z and it can also be found or used like that on its own in spoken German. Da sind sie, there they are. Issa is similar, it's a contraction of ist er, he is. And similar to the B in haben sie, here the consonant T gets dropped, Issa. The term blaue Flecken, blue spots, is the common German colloquial non-scientific term for a subcutaneous Bluteguss, der Bluteguss, singular. Die Blutergüsse, plural, the hematoma or effusion of blood. Manchmal kriegt man Gänsehaut. Manchmal kriegt man Gänsehaut. Last but not least, the sentence contains a word that's sort of similar to its English equivalent, and again it's the common colloquial non-scientific term for goosebumps, die Gänsehaut, literally the goose skin or geese skin. I don't know if you got some Gänsehaut from hearing Till speaking German, or me, well, analyzing Till speaking German, as a German native speaker. What I do know is that I enjoyed making it and I hope you enjoyed it too because, well, this was sort of a try to really explain the specialties of spoken German and colloquial German, daily German, so to speak, a bit better, a bit more practical with a good example. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed this and if you know someone who is also into Rammstein and the German language and maybe even both at the same time, feel free to recommend my videos to them to suggest my channel because that is greatly appreciated and helps the channel immensely. That would mean a lot to me. Thank you. And of course, if you haven't done that yet, feel free to check out my other, my previous Rammstein videos on this channel as well. There's a playlist with all of them right here, so just click it if you're interested. Thanks for doing that as well, and thanks for watching once again. I'm your vlog Dave, tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.